Hello and welcome to lecture number eight on the principles of exercise therapy. This week we cover the mind-muscle connection. Uh, obviously remember that movement starts in the mind not in the muscles. So we're going to come on to our centering slide. What's our profession all about? Our mission statement is um, we're going to study human anatomy and physiology, human movement and function. We're going to maximize wellness and potential. We're going to minimize disease and injury. Ultimately, it's about solving real world problems. So we've got our acronym, the way we remember the principles of exercise thera therapy, adaptation, specificity, progression, regression, overload, reversibility, time out, behavioral change, individuality, lifestyle integration, law of diminishing returns, and your responsibility. Okay, so they should be ingrained in you now by week eight. Um, so this week, what do we need to achieve? Well, what we want to do is recall the properties and organization of muscle. We're going to describe the physiology of muscle contraction and explain and apply the concepts of sliding filament theory. Um, so we've given you some directed study. So there are vis videos covering the, the structure of skeletal muscle and the mechanism of contraction. You need to read up. Um, in a physiology book if you prefer. Um, the lecture is going to be short, um, so it's a quick overview of structures that produce contraction and then there's going to be a tutorial where we explore the chain of events that lead to a muscle contraction. Uh, we're going to consider the sliding filament theory and we're going to outline the length tension ratio. So the properties of muscle tissue. Basically muscle tissue can be divided into three. Excitability, conductivity, and contractility. So excitability uh, is about the chemicals released from the nerve cells. Conductivity is about uh, the propagation of electrical signals over the membrane. And contractility is about the muscle shortening and generating force. So turning effectively uh, a chemical, energy, chemical energy into electrical energy, which then changes into mechanical energy. Remember that um, energy cannot be destroyed, it merely just transforms from one form to another. Okay, so here we have uh, a muscle fiber. Um, so you can see uh, the muscles are long, cylindrical, and multi-nucleated. Okay, multiple nucleuses uh, within those there. So sarcolemma refers to the muscle cell membrane, and the sarcoplasm uh, is filled with tiny little threads called myofibrils uh, and with them some myoglobin uh, as well. So there's a, a visual demonstration of those. Um, here we've got thick and thin uh, myofilaments and they're going to overlap so basically it's important to realize that we've got the uh, the M line here and we've got these Z discs that denote effectively one sarcomere, okay, one muscle cell. Um, and all you really need to know is that as the muscles contract, okay, look what happens. Um, we can, obviously we're using an electron microscope for this as well, but you can see, okay, that the Z discs effectively close in. Yeah, so the muscle is getting shorter. Okay, and you can, we can, you can revise about the H zone, the I band and the A band another time. Okay. But that's just getting in your head, okay, that the muscles are contracting and the, filament, the filaments are overlapping each other as they get shorter. So the proteins of muscles. So muscles are built from three proteins. We've got contractile proteins like uh, actin and myosin. We've got regulatory proteins which turn the contraction on and off, troponin. Uh, and tropomyosin, and then you've got structural proteins which provide proper alignment, elasticity, and extensibility. Titin, uh, myomesin, nebulin, and dystrophin. Okay, proteins of the muscle. Okay, myosin. Okay, so you've got the thick myosin filament here. Okay, it's a big chunky monkey here. Uh, and then you've also got the myosin heads, and they're going to use that ratchet mechanism uh, to for the contraction. So the thick uh, filaments uh, are composed uh, of this kind of like golf club, like two golf clubs twisted together. Uh, and these are going to form the cross bridges uh, that extend towards the thin filaments. Okay, they're held in place by the M-line proteins. Okay, so here you've got the M-line here holding uh, 
the thick myosin filaments in place. Okay, remember Z discs denoting one sarcomere. Okay, and then you've got the thin filaments, the actin. Okay, and these are made uh, of actin, troponin, and tropomyosin. Okay, and the myosin binding site uh, on each actin molecule is covered by the troponin uh, when the muscle is in a relaxed state. Okay, so here we've got actin, okay, here we've got the troponin, and here we've got the tropomyosin. Okay, again, the M line holding the thick filaments in place. Okay, and then you've also um, got uh, the Z disc denoting. Okay, one sarcomere. So the sliding filament mechanism of contraction. So effectively, mice and cross bridges are going to pull on the the thin filaments. Okay, and the thin filaments slide inwards. So the Z disc comes towards each other. So the Z discs are coming towards each other as the sarcomere shortens. Okay, the muscle fiber shortens uh, and the muscle effectively contracts. Uh, note that the thick and thin filaments don't they don't change length, they just slide over one another, and that's important. Okay, so the sarcolemma, the T-tubules, and the sarcoplasm. So skeletal muscle consists of fibers, or cells, covered by a sarcolemma. Uh, the fibers contain T-tubules and sarcoplasm. T-tubules are tiny little invaginations of the sarcolemma that quickly spread the muscle action potential to all parts of the muscle fiber. Sarcoplasm is the muscle cell cytoplasm and contains a large amount of glycogen for energy production and myoglobin for oxygen storage. See the transverse tubules or the T-tubules are the invaginations of the sarcolemma in the center of the muscle cell. They're filled with the extracellular fluid and they carry the action potential down the cell. Mitochondria lies in rows throughout the cell uh, near the muscle proteins that use ATP during contraction. Sarcoplasmic reticulum, or the SR, uh, this is a system of tubular sacs, similar to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum in the non-muscle cells, and this stores calcium ions in a relaxed muscle. The release of calcium ions triggers muscle contraction. So how does muscle contraction begin? It's a five-stage process. So a nerve impulse reached an axon terminal and synaptic vesicles are released, Okay, and this is acetylcholine. Uh, ACH. So acetylcholine diffuses to the receptors on the sarcoplasm and uh, sodium channels open and the sodium rushes into the cell. Okay, a muscle action potential spreads over the sarcolemma and down into the T-tubules. Uh, Sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium into the sarcoplasm and calcium binds to troponin and causes the, the troponin tropomyosin complex to move and reveal the myosin binding sites uh, on the actin and the contraction cycle begins. Um, so if we play this, okay, so you can see, okay, how that ratchet mechanism is working here. Okay, and that's quite important that we understand that. Okay, now we've seen that, we can move on. Okay, so here we've got some detail. Uh, and pictures about what's going on here in particular. So we, number one, we've got the action potential and that's generated uh, and propagated along the sarcolemma and down the T-tubules. You can see it, that it's traveling down here. Okay, two, the action potential triggers calcium release from the terminal cystinate of the cycloplasmic reticulum. Calcium is being released into the cell. So the calcium ions bind to the troponin tropomyosin complex and it's going to change shape, removing the blocking action of tropomyosin uh, and the actin active sites are exposed as well. Okay, so that ratchet mechanism can now bind. The contraction of myosin cross bridges alternately attach the actin and detach, pulling the actin filaments towards the center of the sarcomere. Uh, the release of energy by ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and that hydrolyzes power and the cycling process continues. So the muscle's contracting there. Then we've got removal of calcium by active transport into the sarcoplasmic reticulum after the action potential ends. Okay, stage five there. And then finally, stage six, the, tri the troponin, uh, so the tropomyosin blockage restored, uh, blocking acting, active site, contraction ends, and the muscle fiber relaxes there. Okay, so very quickly, it seems complicated, but if you run through it, it's less complicated than you think. 
So the types of muscle work. So we've got concentric, isometric, and eccentric. So if the force generated by a muscle is greater than the external force, that's considered concentric. Imagine uh, you, you're doing a bicep curl, the weight is in your hand, and you're curling the weight up towards your shoulder. That's the concentric movement. If the force generated by the muscle is equal to the external force, that's isometric. Iso meaning the same uh, metric meaning movement. So imagine just doing a bicep curl and holding it at 90 degrees. That's an isometric contraction. And then if the force generated by the muscle is less than the uh, the external force, that we've got eccentric. Imagine you've 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 pulled a really heavy dumbbell up into your right hand, and then you can let go of your left hand and slowly lengthen under load. Eccentric contraction. So the length tension relationship. The force of a muscle contraction depends on the length of the sarcomere. Too stretched is less overlap, less cross bridges. Too contracted is good overlap, but now the the Z discs are crumpled, uh, the myosin heads as well. So the uh, Z disc block this process. Effectively, you just run out of room. So an example of this is the when the wrist is in flexion. Okay, so flex your wrist and try and make a fist. Okay, and you can't make a very strong fist in that position. Okay, and then if you kink your wrist all the way back into extension, same thing again, you can't make a, a fist very easily. But if you put yourself in mid-range, okay, so that the wrist is flat with the rest of the arm, uh, you'll be in a much stronger position. So this is an example of inner out and outer range where you'll be weak, okay, and then mid-range where you'll be strong. So on the tutorial, we're going to look at this in more detail and see what happens uh, to produce a muscle contraction. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the practical.